and there's only one place to start here. Let's not start from that place, please. <laughs> Manchester no, no, United no, no, let's get not, let's, absolutely let's, no, thrashed by let's Liverpool not, at let's Old not Trafford. Start from that place. And it should have probably been for unlucky for Trent with the Stevie G celebration, but Mo Salah just caught him off a little bit. Alex, we called this. <laughs> we called this. I think all of us, including Clinton, actually said that Liverpool were going to dominate this game. <laughs> and I, listen, I did, it's not like we didn't know that Liverpool was going to win us, but we didn't know it was going to be that bad. That's the whole argument. The way there. they were playing around, you guys, and there's a clip going around of them doing Ronda's uh, it's like the 57th minute, and they are absolutely embarrassing this team. Now, listen, this is, what, this is what Eric Ten Hag had to say after the match, and then I'll get Clinton's reaction to it. So what do you mean? Tell me then, explain me. Uh, uh, maybe you can explain me which mistakes we make regular. Well, constantly turning the ball over in your own half, playing the ball out from mm. the back, getting mugged, chances come on the back a bit. Counter attacks when you're outnumbered, giving up, giving up endless chances in your own stadium against the team's biggest rivals. With the greatest respect, I've been seeing that for so long now. You are sure? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I don't think otherwise you wouldn't win trophies as we did and to beat big opponents. So I'm sorry for you. I have an no, other. I have an other fish. You won it with the greatest respect. You played brilliantly against City in that final. You almost yeah. lost to Cambridge in the semi final. Yeah. I mean, come on. Let's have a realistic view of what happened there. Uh, uh, I think we won after City the most trophies in English football. So I, I'm sorry for you. Eh? Clearly a very frustrated Ten Hag once wow. again. But for him to be speaking about Manchester United, we have the, the second most trophies after Man City. But no one's talking. Like, I mean, if we're going to talk about, you know, the 1960s, then Alex is going to be screaming the three lions. Like, <laughs> it's such a... The, the, the way he's speaking about it. Clinton, how do you feel? Obviously, as a Man U fan, but this is the reaction. A journalist was simply saying, you know, they made mistakes today, and you saw the mistakes yourself. And the reaction is this. Does that not concern you? Oh, God have mercy on me. <laughs> you see, sometimes, right, you, you just... Yeah, I've, I've told Manchester United, if they are struggling with people to coach that team, I am available. I don't know why this people are underrating me. He's, he's, he's a, he's a, the guy that's, that's, that's the coach of Brighton, I'm older than that guy, yeah? Fact is, Ten Hag, Ten Hag, we need to lock him up in a room for... <laughs> pour him cold water for like a couple of hours. So because I feel like there's just something wrong with his thinking faculty. How is somebody is telling you what the problem with our team is? This is somebody who's not even the coach. This is somebody watching the game. It's, it's almost like Ten Hag is watching something different. Even the people that he uses to start a game, especially really important games, they're beginning to really annoy me. How would you start? This is Brighton. This is Brighton. Fam. They've been telling you that Marcus Rashford is not on form. Why would you start him in a game like that? Why would you put Ahmad Diallo in the bench? This guy is the... Listen, there is no Manchester United player that's better than Ahmad Diallo right now. Why, why, why is he not starting such a game? Why is Ganacho not on the left? Why is Ahmad Diallo not, from, not playing from the right? I you know that this guy is down. This, listen, right now, I'm telling you the truth, right? Marcus Rashford should go and... Listen, you guys know how much I love Marcus Rashford on this show. I've spoken so well about him so many times, right? I've told you he has talent. There's something inside of him there that is just not shining at this point. We saw him shine. At some point, people thought that he was going to replace Kylian Mbappe in PSG. That's how good they thought he was. And all of a sudden, he's no longer the Rashford that he is. But how many times do you continue trying that same guy in important games? If we're playing Nottingham Forest, if we were playing uh, uh, um, which other, if we were playing Leicester, even Leicester might even trash us if we even start Marcus Rashford at this point, right? But if we were playing, say, a team like Southampton, Ipswich, you start Marcus Rashford, let him start building his confidence from this kind of team that you know that even if, if Rashford does not perform, there's a high chance that we are going to win. You don't start Marcus Rashford playing Manchester City. You don't start Marcus Rashford playing Brighton. You don't start Marcus Rashford playing a team like Chelsea or Arsenal. What's going on with these guys? Is it that nobody tells them the truth? I think it's really telling that he's starting Rashford and making Garnacho go to the other side in order to keep Rashford playing. Like, you can really see where his loyalties are. 
Well, how did you guys feel also about the substitution for Harry Maguire? Because that was also a horrendous substitution, in my opinion. I mean, at the end of the day, our defense, they were pretty much messed up. I mean, Cassidy... No, you, you, have, Cass you have no defense. Oh, what? I know, absolutely, absolutely. Like, there, and you no. brought in the likes of Delict and yeah. Mazraoui, and this is still a problem. Like, this, it's not good. I mean, you see, <laughs> those, those players are still new, right? That's the one excuse I'm going to give for them now, mm -hmm. right? Maybe they're still trying to find their, themselves. I mean, look at Kylian Mbappe. It was only just, I mean, I know we've not gotten into that, but he's been, the last couple of games, things have not really been well. So I'm going to give these guys the benefit of doubt that they are new signings, and maybe they just need to a kind of click with the team. And they may, maybe later on, they would better understand themselves. Yesterday, Casemiro, who is a very high standard player, comes from, he's come from Real Madrid, the best team in the world. And now he's, obviously, he, he was involved in, in two of the goals yesterday, right? His mistakes. Now, I'm not going to blame him. People do mistakes. Even the keeper, Onana, maybe he could have saved one or two, but he was not expecting the kind of mistake that the defense were making. And then, the, listen, listen. Yesterday, there was something going on in the defense, and they needed to change something. Mm -hmm. Now, if he's bringing Harry Maguire, mind you, Harry Maguire, Harry Maguire might be a very funny defender that you cannot put your trust on, but at least he's had the experience. He's been in that team. He's played in, team, in, in games where they've won, they've, won the match, they've won matches, right? Harry Maguire is the guy that, okay, he knows what's going on. He's probably played Brighton way more than any of the new signings that we have in Manchester United, right? So if they are bringing in Harry Maguire at that point, I would understand. But then again, was that going to help our defence? No, because Harry Maguire isn't playing up to that standard that a Manchester United player should be playing. So you can't really blame that changing. But what I'm saying is when you come... In fact, my problem is they beat us in our own home. We did not even score one goal. We did not score one goal. Oh, God, waiting for all these ones now. Waiting for all this world. I don't finish. Oh, God, then how are you going to kill me for this world? See, listen. They, we, didn't, we didn't even score... We didn't score one goal in our own... In Old Trafford. Do you know what that means? In Old Trafford. Old Trafford. They beat us to the point now, now they want to start making it New Trafford. They want to build another stadium <laughs> because they beat the hell out of our life in Old Trafford. Alex, I know that there was a lot of critique on Casemiro, as Clinton kind of alluded to here, and he did not have a good game, to say the least. But at the same time, there was such a gap between the midfield and the defense that there was also no room for error in the middle there. That I think it was the second goal was you know, halfway up the pitch, and yet Casemiro made a mistake there, and there was no defense after that. Yeah, I mean, I don't really know where to start, to be honest. <laughs> start to finish, back to front, it was a shocking performance. I look at that United midfield, and Arne Slot said it himself, you know, in order, that was one of the keys for them to win that game. They needed three midfielders that were going to run, you know, run themselves ragged for 90 minutes, and you saw it. United were looking tired, helpless, Casemiro, in his, uh, on his day, five years ago, one of the best midfielders in the world, arguably the best centre defensive midfielder in the world, but he's not at the pace at the moment. And he, you can tell he's really feeling the effect of, you know, he's, he's not getting any younger and he's just not at the pace of the Premier League. Mm -hmm. You look at, you know, a player that they would have probably needed and a player that would have probably done quite well yesterday was a certain Scott McTominay, but he's gone to Napoli. For real, yes. I look at the service that Joshua Xerxes was getting, well, that he wasn't getting. He didn't get any service. He had that one header yeah. later on in the yeah. game that was probably their best chance of yeah. the game, their only real chance. Yeah. And then I look at Ten Hag talking in the media about how, you know, he doesn't believe what the journalist is saying about how, you know, we wouldn't have won all these trophies if we weren't playing like this, but... About a year or so, maybe two years ago, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer said something that was quite poignant and you know, it relates back to, to yesterday's performance. Sometimes winning trophies can hide what the real problem is. Yes, they won the FA Cup last season, but where did they finish in the league? Eighth. Mm -hmm. you know, when, you're, when you're a club like Manchester United, arguably behind Real Madrid, the biggest club in the world, you should not be finishing eighth in the Premier League. You know, they've spent... He's been there how many seasons? Three seasons. He's spent almost over £600 million. He's brought in players that haven't worked. He's, he's brought in... He's had free reign on transfers. He's allowed to bring in, you know, former Ajax players that he's worked with before. And he just looks lifeless. Rashford was dire. He, he looks like a former shell of himself, and a shell of his former self. And I look at that performance from start to finish, back to front, disappointing... You know, the only real positive I could get out of that was maybe Maswari. I thought he was okay. 
And you know, you, you just look at some of the signings there. Look Anthony, at the top of that list. Like Anthony, I haven't seen a good thing from Anthony I this season. I cannot believe Anthony. Yeah. Like I cannot even wait, 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 wait. Anthony's still in Manchester United. He is, somehow. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait, 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 no, oh, no, because first of all, first of all, when you know you know how when you know, a team is playing and then they start showing the cameo of players that are on the bench. He doesn't even feature in that cameo. Because... I mean, you, know, you know the heat maps. I yeah. think if it was Anthony's heat map, it would just be on the bench. I, I, I really, you know, obviously he's, he's, there is a quality player in there somewhere, but he's not adapted to the Premier League. No, he's, no, definitely not. Definitely. He's got that big price tag on his head and he's come over to the Premier League. Ten Hag's obviously trusted him to, to be that focal point of the attack, but he's been poor, non-existent. I know he didn't start yesterday. It was Rashford, Bruno Fernandes and uh, Garnacho. It's the selection, it's the tactics. You know, they got run over by Liverpool. You know, Liverpool are a good team, yes, but they're also in a sort of transition period. They're going from, uh, you know, Jurgen Klopp to Arne Slot. It's a different tactics, different culture. You know, this is an opportunity where Ten Hag needs to show that the 660 million that they've spent on his squad over the last three years eventually needs to come good. And, you know, I, I, I'm worried for his job. And I, to be brutally honest, I would be surprised if he lasts until Christmas.